has a hobby since 1956, and I still have a lot of my AM gear left, but got a lot of other stuff too, but uh, yep, I love it. Roger, Roger. Now, do you have a, a full-fledged uh, AM transmitter, or did you just uh, kind of make do with uh, a regular uh, HF radio? No, no, no. I have all kinds of stuff. I have my original Harvey Wells from 1956 and had it on the air this morning. Where and that's over? still a beautiful original shape with original twos. It's, it's amazing. But uh, I, I've got all other kinds of... My other one that, that I use most is an Ico 720-730. And I use a symmetric 522 into a transformer and drive the grids of the uh, EL34s. Absolutely phenomenal uh, audio out of all that. Of course, I use one of our, I'm using our new PR77 uh, large dynamic microphone into the uh, 520 AD. So uh, then I drive all that into a little 30 R1, get about 200 watts into a phased array, and that's what, so that's what happens. Roger, Roger. Now, with your uh, power input and your uh, phased array, what do you uh, figure your ERP is? Oh, I don't, I don't know, Jim. Never did really figure it. But uh, I've got uh, phased array on 75, and I have one here on 40. I use coaxial dipoles because I don't like tuners. They're a joke. Uh, you need resonant antennas in the coaxial dipole. If built to uh, uh, MIT specs, are amazing. They, they give you the full... Full bandwidth on 40 meters without a tuner, and it's uh, right underneath 1.3 to 1. Good enough. Roger, Roger. Now, I have been working on my uh, inverted Vs. Uh, I have three inverted Vs for uh, 40, 20, and uh, 15. And uh, using a, a tuning technique, which is uh, adjusting the SWR on the uh, negative on the ground side of the uh, dipole and bringing it back on frequency on the uh, high side of the dipole. And you keep going back and forth till eventually uh, those three are running uh, 1.01 to 1, Roger. Yeah. Yeah, you got to do that to do all of that. Get the coaxial dipole thing going, you don't have to worry about it. But it's got to be the to the MIT specs. They did that in 1938 as a, a radar antenna for the government in, in the war, and, and it works really well. So that's what I've been using them for decades. It worked really good. And now I've got a tower with a uh, Force 12 on it, but I very seldom get up on the, uh, any of the high frequencies anymore. I used to years ago, but just uh, playing around down here and uh, this is really a station lab where I design the microphones, headsets and all the audio stuff that we do out on the tours and stuff but uh, it, um, it works well for what I'm doing. Roger, Roger. Now your headsets, you using dynamic elements or uh, uh, electret uh, condenser elements or what? Oh yeah, all, all large dynamic. We, we figured it out. <laughs> We've figured out the uh, dynamic. Sirius Radio just tossed all their Electro Voice 20s and uh, bought 250 of our uh, PR40s. I mean, it, it, uh, we worked a long time uh, to get the, the large dynamic to work. They never could get it to work. But, uh, we did, and it works really well. 40 dB of rear rejection. That's what Sirius loves about it. And there's just no other microphone does that, so... My last name's Heil, if that explains something. Oh, Roger, Bob. Yeah, I uh, recognize the voice, and uh, you uh, certainly do have an illustrious career uh, dating back how many, how many years? 1956, I got licensed. Roger, but you were well into audio before then. You were uh, on tour, uh, were you not, uh, before uh, him? No, not 1956. They didn't know what a tour was <laughs> in those days. No, at the age, in that day I was a, and still am. I'm playing big Wurlitzer theater organs. I was at the Fox in St. Louis in those days. Learn to listen, Jim. Listening is a very, very cool thing, but not very many. Many people know how to listen. Mentally dissect what they hear. They hear. That's just physically hearing. But uh, Paul Clips took me under his wing years ago and taught me how to do that. Of course, I, I learned that 
when I was voicing and tuning those uh, those harvesters, which we still do. Got four or five thousand pipes, and, and the most uh, uh, the most important thing is the harmonics of each one of them. Uh, tuning is no big deal, but the harmonic value is very crucial, and got to learn to listen. Oh, Roger, Roger. Well, you have to be musically inclined, uh, I would assume, to uh, uh, be able to uh, get those ears uh, down to the uh, uh, the uh, uh, knit of the uh, octave, right? Yeah, but uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of guys that, in the pipe organ repair business. They're not musicians, but they, they learn to listen. It's all about listening. I was very blessed to... Uh, to have Paul Clips uh, teach me so much. And all of it's based on the Fletcher Munson curve and the Bell Lab studies of the late 20s. But boy, you don't, you just don't hear much about it. And it's really sad, but uh, that's where it all starts, right there. Roger, so you were, you became a ham and then uh, gravitated into the uh, musical area? Well, no, I was playing a theater organ at the Fox. Uh, well, about a year before I uh, got my license, all kind of congruently went. I didn't get into the audio business till it was, oh gosh, uh, 67, right in then, right in there. Uh, they were throwing some uh, Altec A4s away, if you remember that. They had four of them at the Fox. These are 16-foot folded horn front loads, and uh, I... Uh, I was able to get those, they were going to trash them, and I just started playing around with the Macintosh amps, and I also was a Hammond organ dealer, and I was renting Hammond organs to some of the groups that would come into St. Louis, the promoters did, and PA was terrible, so I took that up there one night, and if you want to read about it, you go into Google and you put the night rock and roll sound was born. That, that right there, we turned turned the corner for audio. It was the night rock and roll sound was born. I didn't know. I was just having fun as a ham building all this. But uh, I learned pretty quick that uh, <laughs> there were a lot of guys needing it, and uh, the rest is history. And we ended up in we're the only manufacturer in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We got a whole room full of our early stuff, and uh, a lot of artists there, but. We're the only manufacturer in the Rock Hall because of all the early stuff we did. It's a real blessing. This is K9EID. Roger, Roger, Bob. This is uh, Kilo Charlie 9, Victor, Kilo Victor. And, uh, Bob, your latest is the uh, uh, replicas of the 44BX uh, and the uh, 77DX, Roger? Yeah, that's what I'm talking on. Yep. Yeah, it's worked out great. We've... Uh, Got a number of broadcasters that tossing out all their stuff, especially condensers. I hate condensers. The uh, top end's all raspy. They have raspy ass. Every one of them. And that's not natural. And uh, the articulation has to happen in 2 to 4K. That's where it has to be. And we put it there, and then we balance everything around it. But, uh, yeah, the 77 d is kind of tough, man. Gorgeous, uh, gorgeous build. Also, we worked a long time to get the tooling just right. But, uh, it sure works good and sounds good. Roger, Roger. Now the uh, 44BX and the 77DX. Those were uh, ribbons, Roger. Yes. Uh, yeah, I've got, I got, uh, I got a, re- a 44. You know, I think weighs about <laughs> 10 pounds. <laughs> uh, I got all the real ones. I worked at KMOX for 25 years. I was on the air. And St. Louis at KMOX. Another thing I did during all of that, and <laughs> they'd throw them away. I said, "Wait a minute!" So I've got all the the uh, the real deal. But they uh, they they all they need some help. They're all really low gain, stuff like that. But uh, the uh, this large dynamic is really a jewel. Oh, Roger that. Well, you know, I, I assume that's a quite a bit of a weight difference. Uh, those uh, 44 BXs, it's, that's why they had those large counterweights on the floor stands. <laughs> well, they used, they used inch and a quarter uh, uh, pipe uh, for their microphone stands. Oh, boy. Hey, I just got the lunch call, so I'm going to have to run. We'll uh, talk later. Just wanted to answer your CQ, have fun, and all that good stuff, and... Um, 
Uh, hope you're watching Ham Nation. If not, why check it out uh, in eight o'clock central tomorrow? Just put Ham Nation into Google and doing all kinds of stuff there, having fun. We're building an AM tube transmitter, band switching, 160, 40, 70, uh, 75, and uh, 40. And just having a lot of fun getting people to build again. It's, it's a lost art, Jim, and I sure hope that many are doing it. And we know there's over 100 because of the parts that they're buying from antique electric supply. So we're, uh, we're involved in that big project on Ham Nation. Talk to you later, Jim. Got to go or uh, my food gets cold and then you know what happens. <laughs> this is K90ID. Roger, Roger, Bob. Three is underway. And uh, just a quick question: Are you mainly on uh, AM, or do you uh, uh, use uh, sideband quite a bit? Oh, I listen around on sideband. When I'm working here in the lab, but um, usually I, I'm on AM, seventy-two ninety, seventy-two ninety-five. In the AM windows, a lot of people don't even know about that. It's really sad. The newcomers, they after about nineteen eighty, they didn't, they didn't know, and so. We have that little situation, but uh, 3870 to 3890 is reserved for the AMers, and they don't go anywhere else. That's where they stay. And uh, on 40, it's 7290 to 7295. Don't have much room there, but uh, I usually get in on the noontime net. But I'm going to be late today because i got to go eat some stuff. So, hey, we'll see you later. This is K9EID. Three's right away, Bob. Uh, enjoyed it. This is uh, Case and IVKP, and uh, we do have uh, a QSO vlog page uh, on YouTube, and we uh, have been recording uh, our QSO, and uh, if you might be interested in, in that uh, great sound of hearing it back, <laughs> if you go to YouTube and do a call out of search, Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor, uh, that'll bring up the page, and right at the top of the page, there's one with 180 some odd cusos. And uh, if you click on that, uh, that'll open it up. And uh, right at the top, uh, this uh, cuso should be just under Art Bell. So uh, threes to you. Have a good morning, good afternoon. This is KC9 VKV. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'll check it out. By the way, this microphone stuck straight into an Icon 7851. There is no outboard EQ, no nothing. It's the microphone stuck straight in as it should be. So I just uh, thought I'd throw that in there for you. See you later. Kid on EID. Bye-bye for now. Three is Casey on ZKV, Claire.